More than two million Americans are in jails or prisons here, and more than 200,000 of those prisoners are female. I was 88 pounds when I got arrested, so I was knocking on death's door. Bound by harsh discipline, heavy chains, and hard labor. It's not a good place to be at all. In 2019, a prison lieutenant bludgeoned the body of a female inmate for refusing his sexual advances. This attack paralyzed her for life, while the lieutenant got away scot-free. Here are 10 of the world's most disturbing female prisons. Number 10. Julia Tutwiler Prison, Alabama June 2008, James Sutton, a male nurse at this prison, ordered an inmate, Felicia Dixon, to go into the showers sit on a bench and wait for him. When he joined her, he unzipped his pants right in front of her face and demanded that she'd go to town on him. Dixon refused, but Sutton forced her mouth open. Before any of these happened, Sutton had helped Dixon get a burner cell to contact her family on the outside, as well as food that would be considered a luxury within the prison walls. Now for these, James felt that Dixon owed him for the little benefits, so he forcefully had his way with her. But the trauma she faced that night is far worse than the violations that go on in this immoral bordello disguised as a prison facility. 1942, Julia Tutwiler Prison was built and was supposed to house a maximum of 417 prisoners. Today it holds about 900. After this 2002 lawsuit was filed on behalf of inmates regarding overcrowding and unsafe conditions, 300 women were transferred to a private prison in Louisiana to give the others a little breathing space. Within the facility are four rooms for death row, and it wasn't until 2014 that privacy shower curtains and toilet partitions were installed in a particular section of the prison facility. To put that into context for you, it's been more than 70 years that inmates in this facility have been denied every form of privacy, allowing prison wardens of any gender to prey on them as they wished. As bad as that sounds, it's not even the worst thing this place has to offer. In 2014, 36% of prison officers were identified to have intercourse with at least one inmate, consensual or not. One officer in particular was identified to openly do this with inmates in exchange for cleaner uniforms and new underwear. While women bathe, officers march in unannounced to perform a head count. And in some other twisted scenarios, they might linger in the showers, deliberately miscounting or having all the women turn to face them so that they're standing in full frontal view of the officer. On special days in this place, officers may organize erotic contests like a strip show encouraging these poor inmates to do stuff they don't want to do. And you might be asking, if this type of information is out there, why aren't these women receiving the help they need? Well, for starters, most complaints made over the years have been stalled. And a bigger problem is that this place is chronically understaffed. To solve this problem, many officers are brought in from male prisons in Alabama. These officers are sometimes begged to work many shifts, Still, there are 14 of them overseeing the general population during the day. One officer may patrol a single dorm of more than 150 women. At night, there are just about 10 of them left in charge of 900 inmates. This is on top of the fact that the dorm and open shower layout provide the guards with unobstructed views of everything these women do. They're totally vulnerable, not only to the guards, but to each other. No better than erotic zoo animals on display. Number 9. Karchak Prison, Iran Nothing here suggests that it was built for humans. The hygiene standards here are so low that it makes all landfills look luxurious. This place has a big hall with a high ceiling, where 2,000 women are cramped to live out the four seasons. There are some sections in this hall where about 300 women are squeezed in, while the other end of the hall has about 600 beds, leaving the rest to sleep on the bare floor. Like we said, this place wasn't designed for humans, or so it looks. It was designed to inflict torture on exiled politicians. In Korchak, prisoners aren't separated according to the weight of their crimes. Politicians are kept with murderers and ordinary criminals, making it a more hostile environment. These people have many things to worry about, like sanitation. The worst time for any inmate in this place is when they enter their menstrual cycle as they will not be provided with tampons or pads. 
And if you're like me trying not to imagine what that must be like, then I must tell you that some inmates have their kids living with them. There is no type of educational or vocational opportunities for these kids at Korchak, and more times than not, everyone ends up contracting grave illnesses from overcrowding. In 2019, fresh reports surfaced, saying that quite a number of inmates are suffering from AIDS and hepatitis, yet these inmates are not separated from the others. Outside the hall is a large pool of untreated sewage overflow. Good luck trying to breathe fresh air when you step outside of this place. On top of this, there are barely any windows for ventilation, leaving the prison full of vermin and unwanted creatures finding their way in and out. Some people may call this place hell on earth, but the director of prison, Sogra Kodadadi, took that definition one step further in the way she and her correctional officers treat ill inmates. If anything I've said so far grossed you out, it's about to get a lot worse. Due to the lack of sufficient syringes for diabetic prisoners, the same needles are used repeatedly for insulin injections at the prison's clinic. Plus, there aren't any substantial drugs administered to sick patients, nor is any food of nutrition here. Some of these poor people have been here for more than 10 years and never once had a fruit. Even with philanthropists from the outside sending them gifts and fruits, they never get to the inmates. Number 8. Tahar Jail, India For women in this prison, redemption isn't just lost, it's an extinct concept. On a good day, about 45 women are fitted into a single room with a single light bulb and a barely functional ceiling fan. On worse days, more women are squeezed in by assigning them an area to the exact measurement of their body size. Unlike the other two you saw so far, this place in India is a mixed gender prison that can accommodate up to 10,000 inmates. There are nine different prisons spread across 400 acres of land, and according to a 2019 consensus, there are at least 17,000 inmates incarcerated here. Their living environment isn't even suitable for pigs. This whole place is a haunting embodiment of neglect, where every nook and cranny harbors layers of grime, and the very atmosphere clings with an unsettling sense of decay. Outside this place is a more unsettling horror. There's always a scarcity of water during the summer, where inmates are allowed to shower once every four to five days with at least three women sharing a single bucket of water. But that's not even the worst of it. Most of these cells have a single toilet, shared by 45 plus people. Not surprisingly, their biggest issue was hygiene and sanitation. Inmates would throw their used tampons and sanitary napkins into the toilet instead of the bins. The food served is another horror that comes with life at Tahar. According to ex-inmates, it's so bad it will dull your taste buds with a single drop on your tongue. One time, this prisoner was trying to have a meal when it started moving. She pushed that plate aside and a rat jumped out from the bottom. So, when you factor all these things in together, kind of makes you question how we just squashed fundamental human rights like this. Now put on top of that a gender bias when it comes to the amount of time inmates can spend outside their cells. Men need to be in their cells from 12 to 3 p.m. every day, while women are allowed to be outside after these hours. However, men usually have a bigger space and more activities to engage in like sports. But all women can do is talk to each other and hang out. And if you're wondering how inmates leave to here to other prisons, well, they hardly ever do that because, like I said at the beginning, once in Tahir, redemption is lost. Number 7. Badambagi Women's Prison, Afghanistan Adultery is considered not just when married people have sex, but when unmarried people have sex. That's their definition of adultery. Moral Crimes That's the sole reason 90% of the women behind these prison walls were incarcerated in the first place. One case that may evoke strong emotions within you is that of a woman named Miriam, who is currently imprisoned at this place. In 2013, Miriam ran away from her home in Afghanistan's northern Kunduz province in a bid to escape her husband's vicious beating. She called the only person who could help her at that moment, her husband's cousin. However, he was too busy to help her himself. So he sent a friend who took advantage of the situation. This evil friend of his led her to a safe house, held her at gunpoint, and lustfully assaulted her. When he was done, he dropped his gun on that table, leading Miriam to pick it up and fatally shoot him in the head. 
and she shot herself right after. To her own disadvantage, she didn't die. Instead, she was taken to a hospital, stitched up, and thrown into this prison without a formal trial. She is now one of over 200 women who are in this place for either leaving their husbands, refusing to accept a marriage arranged by their parents, or choosing to leave their parents' home with a man of their choice. These crimes are tagged as moral crimes and are punishable under specific laws in the country. And if you thought that was the worst of it, well, here we go. Some of the women were jailed while pregnant, others with their little children. And as of today, the number of kids at this prison facility is almost at par with the number of inmates, creating a more hostile and congested atmosphere that isn't suitable for these kids. Surrounded by a high fence, topped with a razor wire, there's one small patch of open space where these kids are allowed to play together. Then there's two dozen small rooms spread over three floors with around eight women sharing a room. Without formal provision, the kids were forced to live with their moms inside these rooms. The perimeter is guarded by policemen, but the main building is entirely secured by female staff. Now, these kids aren't compelled to live in this facility with their mothers, but in most cases, they're left with no other choice. For a little more context, the justice system in Afghanistan is a funhouse mirror reflection of what the system should be. Women who run away from their homes to escape abuse or forced marriage are tracked down by the police. Victims are transformed into criminals. And the limited resources that should be used to bring perpetrators of violence against women to justice are instead spent to keep these young women behind bars. These women are disowned by their families and friends. Even society on the outside looks at them as the worst of humankind. Their children can never be safe in such a world. So the best place they can be is to mutually serve a life of misery confined within the walls of Badam Bagi. Number 6. Indiana Women's Prison, Indiana. It's 85 degrees in the cell right now. We're locked in. I'm afraid of dying by fire. Children and animals are even too vulnerable for these conditions, but we're being subjected to them. Those were the words of a female inmate here at Indiana Women's Prison. She described what life was behind bars, but her words are scratching the surface of the human rights violations these inmates face daily. Established in 1873, this place was not only the U.S.'s first separate institution for female prisoners, but it was also the first max security female correctional facility in the nation. As a way to live up to its name, the first inmate to be admitted was Sally Hubbard, convicted for the murder of seven people. And after a year, 16 of the most ruthless female criminals in the nation were sent here. The troubles that marked this prison as one of the worst in the world came when a minor named Paula Cooper was sent here, awaiting her execution for the murder of an elderly neighbor. However, the case of Cooper caused a massive uproar in the U.S., with global leaders like Pope John Paul II actually intervening here. And if you're asking why, well, well, apart from the fact that she was too young to be executed, she was also taken advantage of by two prison guards and one therapist while awaiting execution. And no, no, don't be shocked yet, because just like Cooper, hundreds of women in this place have faced worse. There are so many cases I can use to describe this, but one that comes to mind is how the inmates were treated during COVID-19. What started as a protocol to reduce the spread of this virus turned into a dire and inhumane condition where these inmates were forced to remain in their stifling quarters, begging to use the bathroom or to get cool water to drink. A large number of them would either dehydrate, lose consciousness, or even suffer seizures because their cells reached temperatures that were 10 to 20 degrees hotter than outside. About half of the prison's 650-person population was housed in seven freestanding buildings known as cottages. Three to four women would share these and not have air conditioning, running water, or even a toilet. Inmates were locked in here for 18 to 20 hours a day. I mean, that's solitary confinement by definition. And while we can argue that these wardens were just doing their jobs, it brought up a number of issues. Inmates on medication were denied usage to reduce their need to use the bathroom. The cells had no call buttons, so inmates had to bang the cell door to get the attention of these wardens. It was like modern day slavery. And maybe if these harsh treatments ended after the pandemic, Indiana Women's Prison might have not been on this list. Number five. Rosie's Jail, Rikers Island, New York. 
Rosie's jail is a place where women have been charged but not convicted yet. This means we don't have a verdict, so they stay here until they're bailed out, sent to rehabilitation, or fully sentenced. As a result, the amount of time spent in this jail varies, but in the years, months, or even days leading up to their release, these women are put through the epitome of a living nightmare within the confines of this facility. I'm talking about getting beaten up by other inmates, sexual harassment, and worst of all, death. It's like an initiation ritual into the life of incarceration. But just so you really understand why these things happen, Rikers Island as a whole is the largest penal colony in the world. It's home to some of the largest correctional and mental institutions in the United States and can hold up to 15,000 detainees. That's definitely a lot of people, but when you narrow it down to the all-women's jail, Rosie's, you begin to notice how evil this place is. For one, since it's a jail and people aren't supposed to spend that much time in jail, we don't have vocational or educational options for inmates. We also don't have medical support set up because again, it's a jail and inmates aren't supposed to stay that long. But the biggest flaw in running this system is that there's a significant lack of staff within the premises. This has led to quite the number of problems, including one catching the attention of the US government. It was called the program. So what was it? Well, the program was a regime started by a correctional officer named Lloyd Nicholson, who started a cult of some kind with inmates. Now, the job of this group was to enforce discipline among the other inmates by battering them to absurd levels if they ever did anything out of place. And apart from this insane behavior, you had many cases where these women were just taken advantage of. July 3rd, 2008. Intruders at this place had bound and gagged an inmate with bed sheets and then used an object to penetrate an assaulter. Other inmates may have acted as lookouts during the alleged assault. The woman, who was being held on grand larceny charges for the past three months, was discovered at about 6 a.m. by an officer and a captain who were touring the building. They saw her on the floor lying on her back with bed sheets wrapped around her body. She'd also been blindfolded. This incident was reported to Central Command at 7.30 a.m., and the woman was transported to the Elmhurst Hospital Center. Because she didn't share a cell with anyone, a major question was how the alleged assault happened in the first place. And when you bring all these factors together, you realize that though this might be an ordinary jail, it's worse than some of the biggest prisons in the world. Number 4. Lowell Correctional Institution, Florida this place in Florida is the only female prison in the world where guards get a pass for raping women. Within the walls of this place in Ocala, where criminals are serving sentences, another kind of criminality thrives. One perpetrated by the very individual sworn to uphold the law. December 2020, a report from the U.S. Department of Justice, aka the DOJ, uncovered a horrifying culture of abuse and violence within the confines of Lowell one of the largest women's prisons in the nation. Shockingly, the report revealed allegations of rape, sodomy, beatings, and even choking female inmates at the hands of their supposed protectors, the correctional officers. This place is the primary prison for women in the state. It was established in 1956, and today it's home to almost 3,000 incarcerated women. This institution houses offenders of all security levels, including juveniles. There's also separate housing for death row inmates and inmates in need of close security. So what exactly was in this investigative report? April 2018, the DOJ initiated an investigation into this facility, assessing potential violations of prisoners. Over the course of two years, they were able to gather 108,000 pages of documents, including evidence of explosive sexual assault cases these inmates were subjected to. One peculiar case in this investigation involved a former Lowell lieutenant named Keith Turner. Now, Turner was repeatedly accused of harassing these women multiple times for several years, but retained his position until his arrest in 2019 for abusing two girls outside the prison. During his time here, he would take advantage of these women in the worst ways possible. On one occasion, he battered a woman for refusing his advances and left her paralyzed for life. The state of Florida agreed to pay her $4.65 in the settlement, 
But Turner wasn't charged with any crime, wasn't arrested, and he wasn't fired. July 2020, a sergeant was arrested for sexual misconduct after engaging in that activity in a maintenance room with an inmate. This same sergeant was again accused for abusing another prisoner in 2017 by forcing her to give him fellatio. Not only was her mouth bleeding, but she also had throat injuries. And as you might have guessed, the sergeant was initially charged and the case was buried until the surface of this investigation. Now those are just two of the numerous assault cases these inmates have experienced. It's a tradition that's been here for decades before this investigation came to life. However, to divert the public's attention away from their business, the executives managing this institution throw a low-ranking member under the bus for scrutiny. They use that officer as a shield to protect the rest of them while creating the illusion that they're actively working to stop these violations. An example of such an officer is Nicholas Seaborn Jefferson, who was sentenced to two years in prison for waking up an inmate in the middle of the night, taking her to the bathroom, and manipulated his way into her in exchange for a prescription to treat an opioid withdrawal. However, it has become a better place for inmates in recent years. Among the 161 abuse cases uncovered, eight officers were arrested, several others resigned, and over two dozen were dismissed. But the question now is, will the victimized women ever find true justice? And if not, why? Number three, Bandy Up Women's Prison, Australia. In 2019, the overcrowding here at Bandy Up was at its peak, with inmates having to cramp themselves into this tiny cell and sleep on a floor without any beds. But as inhumane as that sounds, it's just one of the many issues these female inmates have to face at this replica of hell. This prison is where almost all female offenders in Australia are sent to. No matter the gravity of the crime, these women are compelled to coexist in these tiny cells. The facility was opened in 1971, originally meant to contain 69 inmates. However, at some point, more than 300 were recorded in this facility, leading to different levels of assault, mental health issues, and hygiene constraints amongst the inmates. In 2003, the government introduced bunk beds to reduce the number of beds shared, but the number of inmates incoming kept doubling. To put that into context, female incarcerations doubled as compared to men within the period of 2009 and 14, with more than 70% of that number being sent to Bandio. Just picture a tiny house cramped with hundreds of prisoners, and that's what Bandy Up looked like back then. But a scarier image to imagine was how prison wardens used unnecessary force to keep these inmates in check. They would lock the cells at 6 p.m., take little to no care for the inmates who were mothers, didn't fix broken sinks or toilets, and barely put an effort into serving a proper meal. In simpler terms, it was the most neglected prison in the whole country. And if you're sitting there scratching your head thinking about how an inmate could get pregnant in an all-female prison, well, I think you should have figured that out by now. One very insane case that shows the level of brutality shown towards inmates came in April 2018, when this inmate simply identified as Amy was forced to give birth to her child, alone. No nurse, no doctors, and no other inmates were there to help her until that baby came out. Amy was in the late stages of her pregnancy during her trial in January of said year. She was granted bail, but couldn't meet the financial requirements, leading to her getting remanded at the Bandia prison. Then on the day she was due, prison wardens refused to open her locked cell, leaving her in utter agony and pain, and forcing her to give birth to her child alone. Wardens would eventually open her cell door, allowing resident nurses to do everything needed. But just like Amy and worse, more women have suffered from neglection. Now, at least 300 women are camped in this facility with only 10% categorized as high risk, yet all inmates are treated as max security prisoners, meaning the majority of these women live with unwarranted restrictions. Number 2. Bangkok Women's Correctional Institution, Thailand Life for the inmates here in Thailand is a claustrophobic nightmare come to life. Out of the entire incarcerated population, 14% of them are women, meaning Thailand has the fourth highest number of female prisoners in the world, and most of them end up in Bangkok Women's Correctional Institution. 
Inside this place, the sleeping quarter is occupied by 40 prisoners per room who sleep on the floor. Inside the window and fan room, there's one TV and a toilet. At night, the TV's turned on for about two hours, but prisoners can't watch any news. Outside the cell, there's a shop where prisoners can buy items like toiletries, sanitary pads, bras, cup noodles, drinks, ice cream, and snacks. Anything outside the basics provided. However, they cannot spend more than 300 baht, or approximately $12 a day. The money is deposited for them by their family, so the richer an inmate is, the bigger the flex. However, that results in a lot of extortion among inmates and sometimes a high level of violence. Since the establishment of a program by the UN called Bangkok Rules, things have begun to change for female prisoners in Thailand. For instance, a 25-year-old who was incarcerated for drug-related charges was enrolled in a class to learn the art of coffee making from the occupational workshops provided by the prison. The job is only available for a select few whose sentences are soon to end. Before these rules, this was unheard of. The only issue is now these women are cramped in tiny cells, with the poorest hygiene ever. This alone makes the Bangkok Correctional Institution one of the worst in the world. And number 1. Bana Female Prison, Egypt High walls, mobile prisons, overcrowded cells, and a complete disregard for privacy. These are the harsh realities faced by half the women and girls here at Bana Female Prison in Egypt. Their only crime is advocating for their well-deserved human rights, practicing journalism, or daring to voice out against correctional officers. This hostile environment sprung up in 2014, when the facility witnessed a tremendous surge in the number of female prisoners. It crafted the path for the prison to become a hotbed of abuse and ill-treatment, where strip searches, beatings, insults, and deprivation of personal belongings are no longer new. Inmates could literally watch an officer beat up another inmate and they'd just walk past. That's how crazy it gets here in Bana. If you don't believe me, maybe believe the words of Rama, a student who shared her experience while at this place. She was a minor when she was arrested and thrown into this prison for participating in a protest against the harsh response of security forces during the Rabah al Adawiya Square events. During her detention, Rama was subjected to interrogation, where officers physically and verbally abused her, even subjecting her to electric shocks. And just like Rama, female prisoners face severe violations of their rights, both in terms of their needs and their dignity. In more gruesome cases, they would force themselves on them, depriving their basic necessities, like sanitary pads. So why are these women treated like this? What would it take to treat them fairly? In the legal framework, the Egyptian constitution states that detained individuals must be treated in a manner that preserves their dignity and protects them from harm. However, women's prisons usually fail to adhere to those fundamental principles. And just like all the prisons we've talked about in this video so far, Bana Prison doesn't distinguish between political prisoner or common criminal. This is because women, particularly human rights activists, journalists, and political opponents, are targeted for abuse and humiliation within prisons. Many believe the increased arrest rates of women serve as a means of dismantling their dignity. Another issue with this place is the fact that there's a significant lack of female officers, leaving these poor women go through invasive searches by these male officers and security personnel. Bodily examinations from head to toe and virginity tests are inflicted on these female prisoners, increasing the violation of their privacy. But it's not just in Egypt or the US or any other country. It's a worldwide problem, as we've seen in this video, where the rights of these women are violated unabashedly. Yeah, you can argue that no one forced them there, and to some extent some of these inmates might deserve what they get. But on the other hand, some inmates aren't dangerous criminals. Some haven't even been fully convicted. So do these women deserve what happens to them? Do they deserve better? And do you really want to leave this video without leaving a thumbs up and subscribing? Come on, subscribe, like, right now. But anyway, regardless of what you think they deserve, remember that they're still human. The women that are incarcerated and the men have just made mistakes and that everybody does deserve a second chance.